Hello, I'm Guillermo Lopez of the Carla team, and I'll be talking about Scenario Runner. Also, this talk is highly related to another one about Open Scenario. First of all, I'll start with an introduction to Scenario Runner, followed by how to run these scenarios. Then, we'll dive a little bit deeper into how is this model structured, as well as how to create new scenarios and agents. Finally, this talk will be concluded with the limitations and future work of Scenario Runner for version 0.9.9. What do we mean by an scenario? Scenarios are complex choreographies of actors that result in specific situations. These scenarios tend to be focused around one actor, which is the one we'll be controlling, and are meant to force it to react. For example, in the, in the image in the right, here we can see a deer, which is crossing the road, and a blue vehicle, which is forced to brake to avoid colliding with it. This situation can, can be seen here, and it's the one implemented in a scenario runner, but in this case, we have substituted the deer for a pedestrian crossing the road. A scenario runner has several scenarios already implemented, which have been taken from the NHTSA pre crash typology. These can be generally divided into four groups, the control loss, dealing with lane changes, detecting obstacles in, in, in the road, and handling all types of, situ of situations related to intersections. Therefore, Scenario Runner is the engine based on Carla that can be used to execute these types of situations. It is developed in Python and makes use of Carla's Python API. All of these scenarios are customizable and we also support the creation of completely new ones. This can be created directly from Python or via OpenSCenario. We are currently supporting an important subset of features of OpenSCenario 1.0 and are constantly working on extending that coverage. To install it, just clone the repository, install the dependencies, and add the Python path. Now, how do we run a scenarios? In order to run a scenario runner, first of all, we, have to, we must have a simulation or, or, already going for Carla. Then, a scenario runner has three ways of running scenarios. First of all, they can be run by themselves, in other words, completely isolated. They can also be run inside routes, or we can run scenarios using an open scenario file. All of these cases called to the scenario runner.py file, which is the main script of the repository. For the first one, here we, we, we can see the, the, the general behavior. First of all, only a name is needed when we are dealing with example scenarios. However, if we have created our custom scenarios, we need two more arguments that specify the, the path to these two files. The first file is a .py scenario file, and the second one is an XML configuration file, which can be seen in the image. It is this configuration file that links the scenario name, remarked in red, with the scenario file. Now, let's run an example. In this case, let's run opposite vehicle running red light. With this command, we are setting up the scenario, and to check its behavior, we're going to use the manual control. Now, from, from this video, you, you can see here the opposite, ve the ego vehicle, sorry, on, on the left, and another vehicle on the right. This vehicle on the right will run the, the red light, forcing, forcing us to react. In this case, to break. Here we have activated the manual control, and as you'll see in a, in a, in a moment, we've, we're going to have to break because the, the, the other vehicle has run the red light. Then, after this be behavior has ended, we just have to drive a, a little bit before and ending the scenario. The Scenario Runner offers several functionalities apart from just running the scenarios. Among others, we can choose the weather. This weather is used based on, on the Car Car Carla weather. We can also analyze the scenario execution, exporting its results to a file, or repeat in batch several scenarios one after another. Additionally, we are cur currently working to, to create a logging and, and playback mechanism for the manual control 
that will cut the vehicle's control, writing them into a JSON file. And this will be useful in case we want to repeat the, the same behavior again. The scenarios can also be run inside routes. In this case, the agent is guided throughout the town following a specific path. Routes introduce the ability to run multiple scenarios during the same simulation. Therefore, these scenarios now have a trigger position and are activated once the ego vehicle is nearby. To run these, the route argument is used at scenarioRunner.py, which has three elements. Same as before, we need a name and a, a scenario configuration file. The third element contains information about the route, the route itself. Additionally, an agent argument is also needed, which is the one the route will be passed to. Here we can see an example of a route. First of all, the debug flag has been activated, which are these points in green and light blue. Also, the red, the red, the red points are the trigger positions of the scenario. Take a look at the vehicle on the right, which is this one, and this one is the ego vehicle. When it passes near the, the red block, the, the scenario is triggered, which in this case spawns a bicycle over here. This bicycle will, will cross the road when the ego vehicle exits the intersection. And after, after this scenario is done, the ego vehicle just passes to an, an, another trigger position and activates a, a second scenario. As I said, some of the benefits of, of routes are the ability to run more than one scenario per route. Additionally, the scenarios have by default a background activity which brings the town to life, creating a more realistic situation. Lastly, routes can also add new criteria which aren't related to any scenario, such as lane invasion, running a red light, or running a stop sign. All of this has been put, put together and with the addition of some metrics to, to the criteria, we can now have an overall score for the agent. This ha has been put together at the leaderboard, which is an online web service to evaluate AD stacks and I'd highly recommend to take a look at it. Lastly, just, just a reminder that in, we can also run open scenario files by using the open scenario argument, but this will be done at uh, and another talk. Let's now focus on the structure of a scenario runner, which can be seen in this diagram. When we are running a scenarios, the arguments given by the input commands tend to be passed to specific files. These files have to be parsed, extracting the configuration of the scenario. With this configuration, the world is set up along with the scenario itself. Then the main loop starts, which is responsible of ticking all the entities of the simulation. And when the scenario finishes, everything is cleaned up. If there are more scenarios to be run, the whole process is repeated until none are missing. As for the scenarios, they all inherit from basic scenario class, which stores information passed from the configuration files, as well as the behavior tree defining the scenario itself. Behavior trees are a way to organize tasks in a specific order, while also allowing to break down bigger tasks into a series of smaller ones. In the case of scenarios, we run three elements in parallel. The first one is the behavior of the scenario, which is responsible of its execution. The second ones are the criteria, which analyze this execution. And the third one is a time timeout, which stops the simulation after a certain amount of time. Of all of these elements, we only set up two at the, at the scenario file. The rest are done automatically by basic scenario. These, the, the structure of the scenario file can be seen on the right and has at least these four functions. The first one is, as always, an in initialization of, of, of the class. This initialization has to call to, to basic scenario initialization. The second one is the initialize actor function. Here, we initialize and spawn all, all the actors of the scenario. This function is aut automatically called by the initialization function at basic scenario. The third one creates the, the, behavior, the behavior tree of the scenario. And 
the last one is the creates the, the criteria. Here, we just have to return a list of all the criteria, and the behavior tree is automatically done by the basic scenario. These behavior trees are created using the PyTrees li Py library. These have two elements, the behaviors, which are the actions, and the composites, which are the decision makers or the organizers. Let's start by the second group. These are already implemented in PyTrees and have four types. Sequence, selector, chooser, and parallel. Just to put an example, sequence hand handles the triggering of different behaviors in a, basically in a sequence, one after another. However, the behaviors have to be created. We have divided them into three groups according to their use. The first one is atomic behavior, which are the actions. This would mean something like accelerate, brake, lane change, follow a vehicle, etc. Atomic conditions would help with the synchronization of, of these actions. Again, an example, wait until a vehicle is in front of another, wait until a vehicle is ne near a specific location. Lastly, the criterion, which are used to analyze the scenario and other previously mentioned criteria. Again, colli collision, la lane invasion, etc. All of these have the same structure and can be seen here in the right. As always, first of all, an initialization which must call the its pa parent class. Then the initialize function, which is run once when the behavior becomes active an update function which is run on each tick that this behavior is active, and a terminate, which is run once after the behavior stops running. Now, here is a list of the behaviors currently implemented. It is a total of 56, and let's, do, let's take a look, for example, at stop vehicle. This specific behavior, as its name implies, completely stops the vehicle. To do so, we just have two parameters, the actor, which is the actor will, will be stopping, and a break value. This break value will be passed to the, to the control and is the force with which the break will happen. To do so, basically, at the update method, we only have to apply a constant control using this break value, which makes the actor break, and when its speed reaches zero, it changes the status of, of the behavior to success and the ending, ending it. Now, here I'd, I'd like to explain in, in a very gen general way how to create a, a new scenario. In this case, I'm, I'm going to be creating this one, which basically implies that the ego vehicle has to merge into a highway with s slow traffic. I'll only explain the Python-based approach, but again, it is important to remember that scenarios can also be created with the open scenario file. As I mentioned before, we only have to create two files. The first one is, the, is a .py file, and the second one is the configuration. Regarding the initialization, here we'll have the parameters, which will be filled as the scenario is created. In this case, some of the parameters would be something like the distance between the vehicles at the slow traffic or the velocity of this slow traffic. When creating the actors, the ego vehicle is automatically created and we only have to set its location at the configuration file. For the slow traffic, we can either put exactly the in initial positions of every actor or we can just cr create two points, the initial and final one of the slow traffic. Then, for the slow traffic itself, we just create a loop between these two points, record the, the positions every certain distance, and then we just spawn or spawn all of them in batch. For the behavior, we only have to activate the autopilot, which uses the traffic manager, and change some of its parameters to, for example, avoid them lane changing and basically ma making the slow traffic disappear. Then an ending condition is created, which will make the scenario wait until the ego vehicle has, has driven a certain distance. 
lastly, for the criteria, we only need to check collision, and that's all we care about. So a collision test is used. This results in something like this. Right now, we have activated the manual control, and we are sl slowly mo moving into the highway. In this case, I've detected that be behind this server track, there, there's a space, and I can slowly move into it. And, and that's it. It is important to remember, or oh, sorry, it is important to remember that if this is too easy or too hard, the scenario has some parameters that can be changed. For example, reduce the distance between vehicles. Now, in order for a scenario runner to use an AD stack, these have to be created in a specific way, which is what we call agents. First of all, they have to inherit from autonomous agents, and three functions are needed. The first one is the setup, which initializes the agent parameters. The second one is, is the sensors method, where the sensors used by the agent are defined. And the third and last one is run step, which is a function called each tick that will handle the agent behavior. It has two arguments, input data, which is the data retrieved by the sensors at that frame, and timestamp, with temporal information about that frame. We have many examples at Scenario Runner at srunner.autoagents, so go take a look. Lastly, regarding the current limitations and future work, we have mainly four topics to discuss. The first one is the documentation, which we acknowledge that it is currently outdated and we are working on improving it. The second one is related to performance, which it is important to note that when using complex scenarios, they will not be run in real time. We are currently doing an enorm enormous effort to change this, and uh, you can expect very, very good improvements in the future. Next, the scenario runner is currently non-deterministic when running isolated scenarios with the manual control. This is due to how Carla manages client-client communication, and we are planning to change it very soon. In the meantime, however, an important remark is that the manual control logging and playback mechanism has been created ensuring that this deterministic behavior is indeed ensured. Again, uh, while we don't have full support for OpenSNR 1.0, we are constantly increasing our coverage of the features available, and we are slowly moving in, into OpenSNR. This is all from my part. If you have any questions, you can go to the, to the forum or to our Discord channel and feel free to ask anything.